Here I've got a nice problem about rational roots of a certain polynomial. And this comes from a Belarusian math contest from 2007. So we want to start by supposing that we have a natural number that's bigger than or equal to 2. I will call that k. And then we have the decimal expansion of 65 to the k power. And so that expands like a n, a n minus 1, a n minus 2, all the way down a 1, a 0. And with this line over it, that means that these are the digits in this expansion. So this is the ones digit, this is the tens digit, all the way up here, this is the 10 to the n digit. Okay, and our main goal here is to show that the polynomial whose coefficients are these digits does not have any rational roots. So let's look at this polynomial carefully. I've called it p of x, and it's equal to a sub n x to the n, plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1, plus all the way down a 1 x plus a 0. Okay, and our main tool here will be something called the rational root theorem, which I think is fairly well known among people that do these contests. And that says that if you've got a polynomial, the only possible rational roots are of the form plus or minus p over q, where p divides the constant term. So in this case, p must divide a0 because that's the notation that we're using. And q divides the leading term. So in this case, a n. Now let's get into the solution. And our solution will start with a pretty obvious observation, which I think does not require any proof. And that is 65 to the k power has a ones digit of five. So that means we can write it as a n, a n minus one, all the way down a one, and then the number five. Okay, great. But then this divisibility fact here that p must divide 5 tells us that p is equal to 1 or p is equal to 5. Those are the only two choices. So just to reiterate, those are the only two choices for the numerator of our possible rational root of our polynomial. Okay, nice. So let's get into these one case at a time. So the first case we'll look at is this case when p is equal to 1. We'll show that it's impossible to have a rational root with a numerator of 1. So this tells us that the possible roots that we're looking at for in this case are plus and minus 1 over q. But then let's look at our polynomial. Our polynomial is made up of coefficients that come from the set of numbers 0 through 9, given that these numbers are digits of 65 to the k. That means these are all positive, or I guess I should say non-negative coefficients. That means that it's impossible to have a positive root, because if we plug a positive number in for x, it's most definitely going to be positive. So maybe I'll just put a squiggly arrow here. And all of that discussion that I've just done says that my only root is minus 1 over q. Okay, so in other words, if we take p and evaluate it at minus 1 over q, then we get 0. That's what it means to be a root of that polynomial. So that's good. But maybe we should think about how to use the fact that these numbers come from the expansion of 65 to the k. And we can do that with the following observation first, and that is that if we evaluate p at 10, we get 65 to the k. So why is that? Well, that's exactly kind of the definition of a base 10 expansion. So I think that really kind of goes without saying. And now we'd like to somehow relate these two objects. And that's actually not too hard to do. Let's notice we can do a little calculation over here on the side involving modular arithmetic. So first of all, we can take 10 and multiply it by Q, add one, and we get something that is definitely zero mod 10Q plus one. Well, that's essentially just saying that M is congruent to zero mod M. In this case, M is 10Q plus one. Okay. 
But then that tells us that 10 times Q is congruent to negative one mod 10 Q plus one. But now we can divide by Q and we know that we can divide by Q. What we're really doing is finding the modular inverse here because Q is relatively prime to 10 Q plus one. Okay, so that means we can write 10 as minus 1 over q mod 10q plus 1. And this congruence here is our link between this expansion 65 to the k, which is exhibited by p of 10, and the fact that minus 1 over q is a root of our polynomial. Okay, so now let's start putting this together. So we have 65 to the k is equal to p to the 10 power. But now since 10 is congruent to minus 1 over q, this is going to be congruent to p to the minus 1 over q. And this is occurring mod 10q plus 1. But then minus 1 over q is a root of our polynomial, so that gives us 0. That means this is congruent to 0 mod 10q plus 1. Okay, so let's see where we finish this calculation, which we'll pick back up after cleaning up some of the board. Notice we have 65 to the k is congruent to 0 mod 10q plus 1. Now let's maybe get rid of some of this and we'll take that calculation and show that it gives us a contradiction. So we're working on our first case, which is when the numerator of our rational root is equal to 1. And we've gotten that down to this point where 65 to the k is congruent to 0 mod 10q plus 1, where q is that denominator of our rational root. Now we want to show that this gives us a contradiction. But what does it mean for 65k to be congruent to 0 mod something? Well, that means that this thing divides 65 to the k. Maybe if you need to, let's recall really quick that we say a is congruent to b mod m if and only if m divides b minus a. So that's what we're using here. Okay, so like I said, that means 10q plus 1 divides 65 to the k. But now we can invert this a little bit. So we know that 65 is equal to 5 times 13. So since 10q plus 1 divides 65 to the k, that means both of these prime factors must be a part of 10 q plus 1. In other words, 5 must divide 10q plus 1 and 13 must divide 10q plus 1. So kind of in the background here we're using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic that we can divide things out into primes, but I think that's okay. But notice this is most definitely a problem. Here we have 5 divides 10q plus 1, but we know that 5 divides 10, so that leads us immediately to saying that 5 divides 1. In other words, 1 is a multiple of 5, which is clearly nonsense. Notice we get something that doesn't make sense over there on the other side as well, but we might as well stop with this contradiction. So what does that mean? That means this possibility right here, where p is equal to 1, is actually impossible. Okay, so let's keep that in mind, and we'll move on to this next case, where p is equal to 5. So we're ready for our second case, and that second case is our rational root is minus 5 over q. So again, we can take it to be minus 5 over q instead of plus minus 5 over q from our previous discussion how no positive number will be a root of such a polynomial built in this fashion. Okay, nice. But what does it mean to be a root of our polynomial? That means if we evaluate our polynomial at minus 5 over q, we get 0. But let's see, what does it look like if we evaluate our polynomial at minus 5 over q? It in fact looks like minus 5 over q to the n power, a n, plus minus 5 over q to the n minus 1 power, a n minus 1, plus all the way down to minus 5 over q, a 1 plus a 0. So we have this is equal to 0. 
Okay, so maybe that's interesting in its own right, but we'd probably like to transform it so it's an integer equation, and then we can use the power of modular arithmetic, just like we did on the last board. On the last board, we didn't have to transform it into an integer equation because we used this trick about modular inverses, but that's not exactly gonna work the same way here. So how can we transform this into an equation about integers? Well, let's notice that all of our denominators are Q, and here q to the n is our largest denominator. So what if we just take this equation right here and multiply it by q to the n? So that's going to give us 0 is equal to q to the n times the polynomial evaluated at minus 5 over q. We know this is 0 in itself, so we multiply by q to the n and it is still 0. And now let's see everything that cancels. So we have minus 5 to the n a sub n plus minus 5 to the n minus 1 a sub n minus 1. And this is going to be attached to a factor of q because we multiply by q to the n. And in this term, we have a q to the n minus 1 in the denominator. Okay, now I'm going to take this all the way down to the last three terms. And those last three terms will be 5 squared q to the n minus 2 and then a sub 2, and then we'll have minus 5 to the first power, q to the n minus 1, a 1. And then finally, the very last term will be plus q to the 10, a, q to the n, a 0. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. Now I want to reduce this modulo a fairly large power of 5. And which power of 5? I'm going to use 125. And that's because everything that I'm putting here in yellow brackets has at least a factor of 125. Because this term right here picks up with the 5 to the 3, then we have 5 to the 4, all the way up to 5 to the n. But 5 cubed is 125. So when we reduce this mod 125, everything in yellow will become 0. So let's do that reduction. That will give us this is congruent to, well now we have 25 q to the n minus 2 a 2 minus 5 q to the n minus 1 a 1 plus, well we know a 0 is 5, so I'll write this as 5 q to the n. And then let's say this was mod 125 again. But now we can use something about the structure of the expansion of 65 to the k power. And I'll let you guys check this. I don't think it's too hard to check maybe inductively, but we have 65 to the k has a block of a bunch of numbers that has the ability to change, and then it always ends, ends in 6, 2, 5. And that's going to be true for all k bigger than or equal to 2. Okay, but if it always ends in 6, 2, 5, then we know these three numbers here. This one was a0. Well, we already replaced this. This one is a1, and this one is a2. Okay, so let's do that replacement. So now we have, this is 25 times 6. That's 150 q to the n minus 2 minus, so this is 5 times 2, so that's 10 q to the n minus 1, and then plus 5qn mod 125. So let's see what we've got. We've got a zero way over here on the left-hand side, and we've got this polynomial expression on the right-hand side. Well, let's rewrite this a little bit in a way that will maybe take us towards the end on the last board. Notice that I can factor a 5 out of this entire equation. And I can also factor a q to the n minus 2. That leaves me with 5q to the n minus 2 times the quantity q squared minus 10q. And then let's see, 150 minus 5 is 30. So that's going to be plus 30 is congruent to 0 mod 120. Five. Okay, but now I'm multiplying 5 into a bunch of stuff and getting something that is a multiple of 125. That means all of the rest of this stuff is only required to be a multiple of 125 divided by 5, in other words, 25. So the result of that is that I can get rid of this 5 here if I divide 125 by 5, but that's the same thing as just eliminating that 1 there because we get 25. So we're left with the following congruence. 
Another thing that I'm going to maybe leave as homework is the elimination of this q to the n minus 2. As long as q is not a power of 5, we can eliminate this with no worries because it'll be relatively prime to 5 and then it will have a modular inverse. So you'll have to do a case on its own of what if q is equal to 5. What happens in this case and why that does not give you a rational root. So like I said, this is homework. And then we'll move on to the case where we have this polynomial, this quadratic polynomial congruent to 0 mod 25 on the next board. To finish off the last case, and thus the entire problem, we want to show that this thing does not have a suitable root mod 25. And what I mean by suitable is the root doesn't make sense to divide this leading coefficient. Okay, and I want to point a couple of things out. On the last board, this 5 was a 30, but 30 is congruent to 5 mod 25, so I made that reduction. Also, I think I had a 10 here, but I had forgotten to factor out a 5, so this should have been a minus 2. I fixed that little typo here. Okay, so now from here, let's maybe solve this. And unfortunately, the best way to solve this is really just with guessing and checking. So I'll leave it to you guys to work through all of the values of Q between 0 and 24. And what you'll see is that Q is congruent to 12 or 14 mod 25. Okay, but let's recall also that Q divided this leading coefficient. So that means 12, that means 12 divides this leading coefficient or 14 divides this leading coefficient. But that's impossible, and that's because AN comes from the set 1, 2, up to 9. And clearly you can't divide anything by something that is larger than it. So that eliminates the possibility of this last case where we have 5 in the numerator. And thus there are no possible rational roots. And that finishes this proof. And that's a good place to stop.